Welcome. I'm Roseanne Hansen. If you're new, I really appreciate you joining me for the first Around the World in 80 Animals. This is the next phase. We had Around the World in 80 uh, trees and tree-like plants. And so this is our first stab at animals. Uh, if those of you could, who were chatting, talking, um, if you could turn, make sure you're muted and please also uh, turn off your videos. That helps the bandwidth. I'm recording this uh, so that you can have access later. So turn off your videos and uh, great. Let's get started. I'm going to share my desktop and you should be seeing the, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and leave me up at the corner. Uh, you should be seeing my notebook and the beginnings of our Around the World in 80 Animals. Yes. Great. Thank you. And let's get started. Again, Roseanne Hansen, thank you so much for joining me. And we're going to start we're going to do North America in two parts. Oh, yes. And let me also say, uh, if you have a question or something, you can't see something or something's wonky, say it out loud, please. I cannot see the chat while I'm doing this. Um, it's too difficult. So we're doing North America in two parts. So we're going to start in the far north with this magnificent animal. This is a muskox. And a fantastic creature, which we were fortunate enough to, to get to see in northern Alaska. The, the bearded one is, the, is what the uh, Inuit people call him, her, him or her. And the Woods Cree people call it the ugly bison. And it's a hoofed animal. It was formerly panarctic but it has been reduced over the years by, by hunting and many other factors. It was reintroduced in Alaska. There are still um, a, a, a few, let's see, I think about 20,000 left. I do need to look that one up. I forgot to write that down. They're not huge and they're prized for their wool called kiviat, the inner wool, um, which is spectacularly soft and warm. These are grazers. They graze on grasses, willows, woody plants. And here's a very cool fact. They're heterothermic. They can shut off thermal regulation in their extremities in order to conserve core temperature. And their hemoglobin is three times less sensitive to temperatures than our tissues. So, in, and then in, than, than the way our tissues work. So you, they get more oxygen to cold tissues. So let's get started now. As we're going to learn, when we sketch, go for the, the shapes. Now, choose to sketch either one of these. I'm going to do the walking one. Um, and you can get the details. Again, this is recorded. This will be up on the website. Uh, I want to zoom in on the pictures a little bit. We can pull out the, the details in the end. So let me start, I want to put, I'm probably going to do our first two animals. Maybe I'll just do him on this page, him or her. Um, they are sexually dimorphic, but it's hard to tell them apart like this. So what you want to do is look for shapes. So I've got, I'm going to do his rump. See how I'm just feeling out rump. And then the, this kind of triangly shape, main body. Hard to see what, what everything looks like under all that shaggy fur. And then we've got a triangle for, for the, the head. Let's feel that out. Not getting too, too concerned about complete details right now. But Anna, we are not able to see your sketch at all. Right. Um, it's it's not intended to be super strong. You might want to um, change your your contrast a little or, or, or there. That might might come in. I'm about to get stronger, but this is how you do it. 
feel it out, do your shapes. You can see the shapes here. Um, I can see them on my screen, so hopefully you can see them on yours. Um, I'm gonna start feeling it out a little bit more. So here's his shoulder coming down and that hoof coming out. We're just gonna mark there. And then we've got here where the, you can imagine the kind of belly and, and rear end of the animal going through here. You can see the, the other hoof coming down. And then imagine you've got kind of the hawk coming down. You've got to imagine it on this one here. And then we've got the, the other coming down here. And let's, let's put up the, the, uh, the tundra horizon in there so you can, can see what we're doing here. Now, let's go and commit a little more to these shapes. There we go. You see, it's getting a little darker now. We've got a swoop, we've got his back, and now we're coming down. And here, let's let's just go ahead and mark some of these swooshy. This is this is the the long fur coming down. And how do we like that shape? That looks pretty good. I'm going to to switch to pen now because I'm I'm pretty happy with that shape and I'm I'm keeping I'm not being like super uh, remember don't just make it a little rough and broken lines now he's got this horn boss coming in here let's I should have like done that with pencil to make sure I got the um the shape right, but I think I, I'm comfortable with this there. And then he's got a lot of this shaggy fur. And then this overcoat is what I want to capture here. It comes down and you have these tendrils. And I'm not, you know, doing a perfect capture. You know, I'm trying, I did sketch him actually in the wild. My husband snapped this photo and then he disappeared. Um, but I was able to get a lot of the details live by doing exactly what I'm doing now is using shapes. He's got like a forehead there, nose coming down. And then we've got his nose and then how everything kind of disappears in this shagginess, kind of like a buffalo, right? Or a bison. They are related, Bovidae. Here's that leg coming out. Now, eye placement is where we want to get, you want to get really, really careful with your eye placement on all animals. If we get it wrong, oh, it just doesn't work. So I'm looking at right in this, this, this bump here sort of surrounds the eye. So I want to make sure I place that eye. It's a little large. I was trying to make it a little stronger for you to see, but um, if I'm going to use my pen, I'll make it just, just a little bit, not quite so, um, so strong. Okay. I don't want to get into the weeds on detail here, so to speak. Um, but let's get his beautiful, all these beautiful feathers. Let's, you want to mark those to remember. So when we come back and do some color, see so how I'm just feeling out the sky here. Here's that, that forefoot we want to do. We've got this, this other foot in here coming down. So we'll we'll get some color on that. There's another foot coming down and this foot. So we've got that nice swoop. I, I can add a little of height here. Oops, my, my hand just went wobbly, so that's all right. There we go. Swoop, swoop. And we've got 
This is the um, musk ox. And let's get Ovibos Moscatus. Mos, oops. Catus Moscatus. And we'll want to put in some details here, but I'm going to, I want to move on shortly. Um, I took a little bit more time than normal just to get going. We had some explanations, so I, I took a little bit more time. And I, just noticing this, you know, getting that, capturing that shagginess. And this is um, in Northern Alaska. on the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. And I think it's pretty simple color wise. I don't think I'm gonna do a color demo unless we have time I can come back. I'll finish it and do some more. I will put some, some notes in here. Uh, I'll probably take some, some time to uh, copy out the, the Inuit language version here, which I'm doing right now, just taking a start on, which is very cool. The bearded one. And that the language is inuktitut. And we'll do a bit more facts there, but I think we need to move on. So here we go. We're still going to stay in the north pretty much the whole time. But this time we are going way out to the coast of Alaska up by the Bering Sea to look at this amazing bird. Isn't he spectacular? And that's the chick, which is completely adorable. Look at those eyes. So this is a crested auklet. These are small, like seven to 10 inch long, tall birds when standing. They're in the Bering Sea in Northern Pacific. They nest in huge colonies of up to a million birds with some other um, auklets, least auklets. They have this incredible forehead crest, what are called auricular plumes, which are the white plumes over its auricular, the ear, if you will. And apparently they smell like citrus fruit. And all of that um, has a reason. So they think that the, the color of that bill the plumes uh, are all part of like asexual, uh, uh, not asexual, but sexual at attractant. It's it's for show. We'll talk about that orange in a minute. Um, the scent uh, may repel what they call ectoparasites. Uh, and the females' bills and, and plumes, they have them, but they're slightly smaller. And they think that the bill might be fluorescent uh, due to a compound called terrans. And it might be more visible in fog and mist, but they think it also might signal to a mate that they are great at catching food. So um, that the terrans are in uh, the shrimp that they eat. So that is really fun. So let's turn the page and start with our lovely let's see I'm gonna move the camera rather than move everything around on my desk because it's kind of tough here let's start with so thinking about thinking about the shapes here 
and of course the colors, but the shapes are really fun. So let's, let's make sure we leave enough room. So here's gonna be the top of the head. The main shape is this football-y thing. I'll try to press harder than I normally do. So go for a football shape, skinny football. And don't worry if you don't get it right the first time, because you can you can change that. And then go for a oblongy head shape, eggy shape here. And we'll start teasing that out. It also has a triangle, go for shapes, that extends the head that way. Now don't worry again. Let's we're going to work on now on teasing out the shapes. I think I'll also do a a detail of the of the bill, a close up. And so let's just work on a, a rough idea for the, the shape. So now I'm connecting my shapes. I'm gonna extend out the head a little bit. Let's get this a little closer. That helps. There you go. And then this is, he's got kind of a long, forehead, oops, sorry, going on here. Come on, focus, there we go. Um, I'm gonna worry about that shape. Come on, focus. Um, there we go. It's probably too close. It's wanting to focus on my hand and not the, um, this, the, the, the drawing, come on. All right, let me let me back off a little bit. Okay, come on. Well, I'm just gonna have to keep persevering um, and hope that, there we go. Now, we need to extend this a little bit. You can see that the shape isn't quite there for our bill, but we'll also get a, a closer look in a minute, if I have time. So let's get those plumes. I did this kind of smile thing. Okay, we've got the shape here. Got the chin coming down. I think I'm going to go first. Let's let's place that eye. So here's the 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 bill is coming up here, and the eye right there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Extend the head out a little more. And we've got fluffy Let's mark the uh, the colors here and look at okay don't forget look at that foot coming out the foot extends way up and we've got looks like part of the primaries are showing here perhaps it's a little under or, or uh, exposed so we don't have a good view but that's okay so this gives us a really good start here if i do some details with my pen here Got the chin, got our bill coming down. And let's get that kind of <laughs> smile thing going. And then our lovely plumes. They apparently can have as few as like, just a few or as many as 
like 18 to 20 plumes. Oh, if you if you're back at the head still, don't forget to leave room for the auricular plumes. I I forgot to leave some blank space, but that that works. So mark your edge of the dark. Fluffy white bits. The belly coming in. Get that eyeballs completely round with the black dot in the middle. We'll get that orange going. It's kind of a pink. Bit more of an upturn than I gave it. And we've got these, the feet are of, of, of course webbed. Can't get in a huge amount of detail here. Okay, so now this guy's fun. Hopefully it won't smear too much. I put a fair amount of ink on that. So when I do my color, I'm worried he's gonna going to bleed. Let's see what happens. I want to mix some, let the black up here dry. Let me, let me test it and see just, yeah, it's smearing just a little bit. Don't want to go in there yet. I could lay down what I'm going to do is lay down just a little bit of, of yellow first, and then I'll be, if you have a bright orange in your palette, just go for it. Um, I put down the orange first, and then I'm going to swash over it with some of the magenta, which will create a, a nice orange. And now I'm going to make a black with burnt sienna and in Danthrone. These are brand new. I just added the paint. So they're, they're a little bit hard to get, get into. There's a, a black coming. It's not a super strong black. I'm going to do, do a, this first with some kind of broken dry brush because this back isn't 100% black. So I can do it this way and maintain some of that mottling. And if you have a, a pre-mixed black, good to go. I prefer to mix mine. And now there's some, some delicate work here. Let's get those auricular plumes. Try not to fill in his eyeball. But if you do, just use some white gouache or a gel pen. In fact, that might be easier just to, to see, I just, I just uh, lost part of it. So I might do a, a gel pen later. There. I'm going to let that dry and then add some, see if I can add any of the 
the magenta to get some orange going here. See how that does a really nice orange already. And has, it's kind of modeled anyway, so that works. So let's be sure to say who this is. I think I, I'm gonna need some white um, gel pen here um, to fix his eyeball. I got it a bit too filled in, so I can come back and do that. So this is a crested offlet. All the offlets are called are in the genus Athea. Christatella for the uh... oh. excuse me, I've got a question. Uh, does this bird may fly or is it like a penguin? These uh... are more like these are more like penguins, so they're they're almost strictly aquatic um, hunting in the in the ocean. Um, they do, ah, oh, you know, we'll have to look up how much they can fly. Um, maybe someone can Google that. Uh, that is a really good question that I, I was so focused on the physical characteristics. <laughs> I forgot, <laughs> I forgot the, um, that. So someone do a, 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 a quick, um, let's do some they, research. Good question. They fly quite well. Um, Excellent. They also swim quite well. They're they're um, yes. They are they're, they're designed for streamlined for swimming uh, after their prey. Nice, thank okay, you. So they are the missing link between penguin and flying birds. <laughs> Perfect. So we'll get our. I always like to put um, our details. Bills maybe. Fluorescent. Uh, from a compound called Terin, T E R I N, P T E R I N. A compound found in uh, Shrimp, uh, a shrimp like creature in their food, we'll call it. So I'll come back and fix that. The, the one I think one of the features is that super, super um, round eye, and um, I'll come back and fix that with some white gouache. And you can you can always come back and fix your your lines a little bit here. Like I think his back was. It's a little bit farther out and we can, you know, add some shading a little bit to make, make his chest a little more puffy and rounder and approximate, you know, kind of the feather thing going on. I think that will help. And those, those webbed feet really, really stand out. So I think that's a really, really fun bird here. Really fun. And looks like I, I, I left a, a white spot there. So go in and fix that. So I can come back and do some more work on him. Um, one thing you might do is come back later, uh, do a closer study of that incredible bill. All these photos will be on the website. So you could go in and do a zoom in here of the bill and detail here and talk more about this fluorescence and look at the complexity on that bill. Really cool. So that would be a fun thing to do if you have time. We're going to move on to our third species. And this time we're heading inland. This is a fun one. 
These are tundra swans. Beautiful, beautiful species. I love this bird. Uh, we got to see lots of them up in Alaska. Uh, they, some people are splitting them into the Palearctic species, uh, Buicks, or the Nearctic species, Nearctic being um, the New World uh, whistling swans. So that's what we have here. They're pretty small for swans, um, just about maybe 80 inch wingspan and about up to 20 pounds. So you've seven to 20 pounds. They're all white with black feet and a black bill and then varying amounts of yellow um, around the eye and upper part of the, of the bill. Uh, they do breed in the tundra, which is where we saw them. And they winter on coasts and may hot, they may fly as high as five miles in the atmosphere uh, when they migrate. So they feed on aquatic vegetation, um, also grass, and then grains and crops. So they were once the most common swan in North America, but sadly um, they've declined because of, of um, lead poisoning. So choose your choose your swan here, which one you want to, to draw. I think I'm gonna put mine down here and draw the one on the right. I like, I like his, the aspect of that. And what I'm going to do, oh, you know what we forgot to do? We like to put the size. Um, so this guy is, and I forgot to do that with the muscat. So, you know, you wanna put like a scale and this guy was like, um, I think only about 10 inches tall. We'll put, so we'll wanna do that with the swan because these are gonna be on the same page, but at different scales, which is why I jumped into that. So do your shapes. Let's get, we've got kind of a overly blobby thing going here. Can you see that okay? No. Some people can. Can't people see can. it, Roseanne. Say again, no. So work on your, your shapes, how's that? And then what you wanna do is get your proportions right. So what I'm going to use the old thumb measure thing with my photo. So I'm gonna measure his body there and then how tall is that neck so starting at the bottom at the width of the body is just about the same as the height of that neck starting about there so width of the body neck that's, that's about where I want to go with the top of the head. Um, so I get that right. So his, his, you want to do your, your, just put a little marker there. That's a little small, but we're going to, we're going to extend it. Um, and then come down and get that lovely swoop there. And I think that's a good proportion. So you've got the swan cheek like that. And then he's got a pretty skinny neck and then it, it opens out there. So let's, let's go ahead and dive into, well, I'll do pen in a second, a couple other shapes. Let's not forget, okay, we want to mark these little balls where his pantaloons are for his legs, kind of like an ostrich, it looks like. And then there's a kind of a, a rectangle down here marking the tail. So now when we we start adding our other shapes. We'll have some, some good markers for that. 
and we've lucked out <clears throat> we haven't had to draw any bird feet because they're all hidden in the photos so we're totally cheating but that's okay it would take us too long to do bird feet are hard so let's get some ink in and then i'll work on the proportions for the the head and the bill Lovely, lovely birds. If we have time, I'm going to show you a, a, a quick video of them that we did. I'm going to go ahead and ink some of this just really lightly. Um, you get, you're getting a sense of, of their these scalloped plumes, plumage, and then his, I call them pantaloons. Remember, we're just, we're wanting to do a, a capture here. We're not, you're, you're out in the field, you're trying to do this quickly. They're walking around, so. You, you're doing this as quickly as you can, capturing the essence of this, the black legs. Let's get the, um, that tail captured here. And then we wanna make sure we've got these proportions right. So you've got your your big oval for the head. Then there's this, they have these really strong cheeks, I call them. I don't know if you, and then he's got a very, let's do a triangle and then we can worry about the proportions there. And then looking again at the proportions, that bill, and you could do this in the wild, look at his head and his bill are about the same proportion wise. So I made that just a tiny bit too small. It's really hard to get these exactly right. So that feels better to me. Then you've got a triangle pointing at the eye. Which is way up high. Do we want to get a eye marked? There's a bit of a, a down, tiny bit of a hook on the end of the bill, hard to get at this scale, but that works. And then let's get this inked in here. Whoops. Yeah. So I'm happy with the shape on that. There, my ink's good. We, we've got some nice shading in here to indicate that strong cheek. And we'll be able to pull out this yellow bit with paint. So we've got some grasses in the snow. Got a, oh good, we still have the right colors here. I'm going to get, for the bill, I'm probably just going to use my ink. There's, there's no, reason to do the full black, I mean, to, to paint the black, I'm gonna leave 
some white highlights come in with the uh, with the yellow in a minute, but let's just get, I'm gonna get his body wet so I can add just a tiny bit of gray to give him shape. So I'm gonna pull some out of here. God, I need that to be like really, really light. Oops, so you can see really light and then I'm going to drop in grays it's a fine line between how much to put, you wanna emphasize the white by adding the grays. You see how that's helping to pull him out. It's a little bit of yellow in there. But that's that's kind of hard to capture without getting a little weird on the, the coloring. I mean, the yellow, this, kind of dirty yellow. Let's not worry about that too much, right? I mean, we're this is capturing it in our journal, not we're not doing a a complete portrait of this. Okay. This is good. Got that yellow in there. And throw in some Get this this grass. And we might want to just throw in a tiny bit of just a little bit of blue reflection on the snow so we can indicate that snow later. Let that dry. Oops, and we forgot to name him, which I'm going to have to try to do by uh, now that I've got that wet. So this is um, ooh, Tundra Swan. Got my hand in the wet. So this is, I'm I'm definitely smearing this a bit. And this is Cygnus, which is all swans. Columbianus. Um, I like the way he turned out. I think I captured him. Uh, and we'll get some, some notations here. So this is um, small swan is about, I'm just gonna go ahead and put around 60 to 80 inch wingspan. And that they, this is the, um, Let's see, breeds in tundra. I'm sorry, Suzanne, what was the uh, location? Oh, yes. Um, so this fo the photo, the birds that we're looking at here are um, from, this is, this is the, um, what they're calling the whistling swan um, sub, subspecies. So this is whistling and it was um, uh, Northern uh, Alaska.
I'll add a few more details as I as I um, finish it up later. So this is the subspecies whistling swan. All right. Hope you're sort of getting the hang of it. These are challenging, so don't worry. Let's find out who else is up here in Northern North America. Oh, let me just show you this really quick. I know I'm running over time, but these are, are the um, subspecies whistling swans in Northern Alaska. And it just shows you them feeding there both pelagically like under the water, they'll stick their heads and eat. And then they'll also be feeding in the grasses too. This is a, real, this is a wet, really wet area. Kind of fun. And you can see how far back their legs go when they walk. So that would be fun to capture. And that's what I did when I drew them live. And those are four of their, um, what do they call them? Signets, little guys. So fun. Very sweet. <laughs> Ruth, Ruth Ann? Yeah. Ruth Ann, um, at Wapato Lake National Wildlife Refuge, which is a new refuge uh, in Oregon, um, they're bringing back the swans. Oh, wonderful. So it originally had millions. Oh, um, I know. When the native, native peoples lived there. But wow. <laughs> they are starting to come back. Well, that's good news. And yeah, they're, they're, uh, their biggest challenge is the lead ammunition that wild bird hunters use. Um, so we're working on changing that. So here we go. Where are we going next? We're staying up north, but who are we finding? <laughs> One of my favorite species. This uh, is a photo my husband took. Um, this one was in Alaska, and it is the red fox. And it is one of the most successful carnivores on the planet, really. Um, and it's doing really well because it really benefits from human. It, it benefits from human habitation, so it follows humans wherever they they go. It's also been introduced in Australia, but it occurs North America, Europe, Asia, part, parts of North Africa. Crazy. Um, very large for a, for a fox and very highly color variable. So this one is really very palely red and they go really, really russet. So they're, they're big. They, they can um, get up to like 35 inches long, not including the tail. The tail is about the same length as the body. Uh, they do mate for life and breed um, with help from family groups. Uh, and we'll, we'll do so in, in dens, and they eat primarily rodents, as you see here, and that is a vole, and we'll actually be looking at him more closely, um, but the, they'll also take squirrels, birds, reptiles, invertebrates, young uh, deer, ungulates, um, as well as fruits and plants, probably why they're so successful, they eat just about anything, so let's sketch this cute little guy. Um, move this over. Okay. So how do you go about sketching something like this? And where am I also, where am I going to put this on my pages? So just looking at this, this layout here, I'll probably do four things here. And since that's, I, I think just from a, a so-called design perspective, I'll probably put him here and do my writing here. These are kind of the same shape. And now I, I actually can't remember who's next after Red Fox, so we'll see, um, but that should work. You could vary it. You could um, put it over here and have the writing next to each other. But that's just me just talking about why I, like people ask me like, how do you decide where you're going to put something? And that's kind of how, so shapes how do you how do you draw something like this ah it's like no well let's just go with the shapes um get this a little bit closer for you 
this is just shapes. Don't worry too much. Don't think, oh my God, I'm drawing a fox. Let's let's go with the shapes. First of all, I want to make sure I leave enough room. Um, and he's basically like one, two, three, four, five big shapes, and then we'll add some little shapes. So let's let's start with his his main body. Just do do a rectangle, literally. I know this feels weird, but trust me on this. And I'll make this a little stronger than I normally would. Okay, just do a rectangle, okay? Then you're going to do kind of a, a, a diamond shape here. Okay, leave that for the moment. Then come down here and do two more, two triangles. A little bit, a little bit offset. Don't worry too much about all the details. Uh, we're going to work on smoothing that in and then do a trapezoid shape there. Up here, we want to add two little triangles. And you can see our, our, our shape coming together here. I'm I'm revising that a little. And then in the middle here is another diamond shape. Let's leave that for now. And then we want to place these shapes here. A little bit down. This is the paw. And a, just do just do a shape. Don't don't worry too much about it yet. The details his elbows, if you will, do a shape. Don't, don't try to draw an arm at this point. Don't think about it. You're, you're just doing some shapes with a, a circle on the end here. Okay. It's getting there, isn't it? So now let's connect some, some dots here. I'm gonna use fuzzy lines because he's fuzzy. All right, coming down here, let's fuzz out the tail. And you can do this in pencil or pen, but I, I just wanna make sure I got my proportions right here before I commit. Got some, oh, I love, I love their fuzzy pants. Is that just so cute? And don't forget his legs, see that? And now we're, we're refining the shape. Fuzzy pants, don't forget. And his fuzzy belly, just got that. You're using them kind of light strokes here. Fuzz, 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 coming up. And let's get that dark nose now to anchor this. There we go. Right? Looking pretty good. Looking like a fox, isn't it? And uh, all these critters are standing in grass. Funny how that is. Don't have to worry about critter feet. Kind of cheating. Now, up here, let's go. Let's kind of go to Penn. I like this shape. He's good. Um, Kind of get a little bit of the twist. Haven't quite got the, the the twist in his body here, but we're doing a quick capture. I'm not doing a lot of straight lines here because he's he's fluff. But there's a, a sweep here we want to get. down.
you can see I didn't quite get the um, the twist of the body, but that's okay. You're doing a quick capture. I did sketch him live while he was jumping around um, with this with this vole. Remember to leave the nose a little shiny. And then uh, very careful, just dot, 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 dot here. Um, don't, don't do too strong of definition. Get that chin going here. Little shape. Get those teeth. And then go ahead and darken the mouth. I would use like just hash marks at this point. Um, and then let's get this nose coming down and then anchor those eyes right about here and here. We don't, we don't have a lot of view of the eyes, but there. That's good. I wouldn't go like too much into super detail or you'll you'll end up with kind of a muddy mess. You see how I'm just dotting that instead of don't do super strong lines and you'll 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 get a better representation. There. That's coming together. So his body here was twisting more. Coming down, let's get those fuzzy pants. And we'll, we'll do so just a few little, I'm just barely gonna dot in here to mark, I wanna mark where his russet is, just dot, dot, dot. Um, so we can remember to leave the belly white. And then we've got his arm. Just a little, little awkward, right? Um, and his paw, which is sort of oblique to us. Don't worry too much about detail. Just go ahead and scribble that in. We've got a paw here. Get his elbow, as it were. And then scribe in the, the tail. And I tend to just use open lines here like that. And we'll let the paint do um, more of the work, remembering to mark like, okay, this was dark and he had some of the kind of darker hairs in here. And we've got open here. Kind of showing that rough. There. I think that gets us pretty close. He's very cute. And yes, he did play with that vole for quite some time before he munched it down. So, <laughs> oh well, poor vole. Let's see. I'm clearing out my palette here because I want to get some colors going. I'm going to do some russet. And yes, I, I did add a little yellow to it because he's pretty, pretty pale for a fox. OK. 
for a red fox, just to knock that back a little, get more of the orangey going. Um, so let's, I'm just gonna get this damp where I wanna drop in the russet color, trying to remember not to fill in where he's supposed to be white. And get it fairly damp because you want this to bleed um, nicely or you know flow. You, you don't want hard ed too many hard edges. So I'm going to just drop some here. There we go. Trying to maintain some of his featheriness. Okay. And then ultimately we'll want to go in and create some darks. We've got a lot of other animals to do. This is ambitious. <laughs> so I think after adding a little bit here, I'm going to move on. really dark paws. That's kind of fun. So you can you can keep working on refining your your fluffiness and adding some detail in here so you um, like do just a tiny bit of of the the dark shadows to emphasize the white. But I think that's fun. Oh, and we forgot. Uh, this is Red Fox Volpe's Volpe's. And it is um, one of our most successful. Global carnivores. <laughs> and he's about 14 to 20 inches at shoulder. And we can mark that here. We also need to mark the tundra swan. I forgot to do that. And he's about 18 to 30 inches long. And we'll mark that the tail plus the tail. So I think that, that we're good with, with him there. Um, love the, I'll let this dry, I'll come back, I'll do a little bit more detail work, but I think that we're good with Mr. Fox or Miss Fox, I'm not sure. But let's keep moving to number five. Where are we going now? Across 
across northern North America and into the south, we find our bowl that Mr. Fox was eating. Now, if I had been thinking about it, I would have put the um, put the fox down at the bottom because I forgot um, who was next. But that's okay. This is a meadow vole, um, which we ended up finding one in our yard under a brush pile that was about to be consumed um, by the weed eater. So we grabbed him for a moment. Um, I was able to take pictures and we can sketch him before we released him after the weed eater went through. So he was released back to his little burrow, which we recovered and he was good to go. Um, this is a meadow vole, uh, pretty widely distributed in North America, across the northern parts, uh, northern and upper part of, of the US, active year round. So these guys can, can withstand really cold temperatures. They dig burrows for storing food, for the winter and they feed on grasses, sedges, forbs, sometimes invertebrates and fungi. And they're really important for habitat re restoration and they are a regeneration agent. So they disperse the mycorrhizal fungi and grass seeds and their nu and nutrients all in a nice little package across the, the um, Northern hemisphere <laughs> and regenerate the, the land. However, gardeners trap and kill them with a vengeance because they will girdle trees written underneath in the roots and kill young trees and people dislike them very much, uh, but they're very important um, habitat creators. So, oops, no, let's sketch Mr. Vole. So like I said, if I had been thinking, I would have put the fox down here and sketched our vole up here, but that's okay. Um, we'll put our, our Mr. Vole. And voles are really easy to draw, right? She says, um, pick, pick one that you want to draw. The bottom one is basically a circle. <laughs> um, and, and very, very cute eyes and nose. Let's get, let's see, but his, his feet are kind of obscured. I think I will, will draw the one on top which is basically two shapes. We've got kind of a, uh, a, a triangle with rounded edges. And then we've got, and I'm, I'm making him almost life-size here. Maybe, well, actually maybe even bigger than life-size. And then you've got, you know, a circle. See how I'm just going ahead. Feel, feel the shape of a vole. That circle's too small. I mean, too big. Because um, it's a bit of an oblique angle that we're drawing. And he's turned almost straight on or side on to us. And you can't really see his little ears. So we'll be guessing where those go. Here, I'm, I'm feeling out the nose a little better. But just use your, your pencil to feel out the animal. Now here we can see a bit of a head shape here. And then his, his back comes up and around there. And you've got one of the four feet is showing pretty well here. And four toes are showing. And little little digging nails. And then this this next one is sort of obscured in his um does the yeah. tails. They do have a little tail and it you can't see it in here, but it's about um it's a little hairless tail that's about about the same length as the main body, but not with the head. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't think any of the photos we got the tail. You can certainly Google it and get your own um, 
representation of that if you want to add a tail. And then we've got the uh, back foot here. It's kind of um, oddly distorted by the um, the glass sort of sitting on it. So if we come around, now we've got to want to place this little eyeball. Make sure we get it in the right location. So I did it really faintly and then ink that in. And then we have just, I mean, the guy is just full on fuzz. There's just a little bit of the nose here and his little mouth right there. And so when we start inking, again, uh, we're not going to, I don't want to do like straight lines, but let's make sure we sort of represent, you can see the fur is a little more proud here where the neck, as it were, is. And I think his his little ear is buried under right there. So I'm just using very random pen marks to show, try to show fuzz fuzz. So if I used a solid line, I would, um, you would end up obscure, like it just wouldn't capture the essence of the little guy. You could go crazy, you know, doing ink work here. Um, but we'll just do, what I'm trying to do is show which way the, the fur lies and then call it good because I don't wanna do a bazillion fur strokes. You could, if you had time to do a complete study. Now you see how it starts standing up on a little bit different around his little nose. That's worth capturing. And don't forget to leave eye shine. Like that. So that it's not a solid black. And just give, give, um, Give it a little bit of motion on, on his fur. And we'll want to do his feet. Rodent feet are really hard, I think.
And then we can, um, oh, let's put in, um, so let's see, what would be fun is to say, you know, eats rodents, uh, including <laughs> voles. And then we can do a arrow, meadow vole. Microtus pensylvanicus, woof. It's a long one. I'm leaving up space. Oh, barely. And these are very important. habitat regenerators. Uh, Roseanne, I looked them up and um, apparently they only weigh to less than 50 grams, so it's not much for a meal. <laughs> <laughs> I know it takes, this fox was probably out there hunting voles all morning. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot of work for a little bite, isn't it? It is. He's very cute. So we want to try to capture a little bit of the um the mottliness of the nature of his colors. So I'm I'm dropping in, I'm I'm wetting it. And I've got some of the lighter colors. Almost blonde. His nose is very pink and he has a white chin. He or she, not sure. We did not sex it. That would have been rude. And if you remember, you can create a really nice brown by mixing your three primaries. And then we can get in some, some brown. Kind of darker on the edges. And what I want to do is probably go in, I'm going to lift off. It's going to take several passes to get what I want in terms of the motley nature. So I'll let that dry and come back. Roseanne, does he have retractable claws? No, they're they're not retractable. Okay, um, I'm gonna let that dry. We'll have to come back to him, and I can add more more detail. Oh, and while I'm while I'm here, I can really quickly just barely pink his nose there, so he's got a little pink nose. And we left the white chin. Okay. We'll move on. Let him dry while I'm... Oh, I ended up giving him a mask. I'll have to fix that. He doesn't quite have a mask, but he's cute. I can add more whiskers too. All right. Who's next? Take a sip here. Well, where are we going? We are going down into... 
well, this animal is all over, but here our representational animal is in Minnesota. This is, or, or for the, or the Great Lakes region. This is, of course, our beautiful North Beaver, Castor canadensis. It's the second largest rodent in the world after capybaras. And they can weigh up to 110 pounds. I've seen one in, in Fairbanks, Alaska, that probably is about 85, 90 pounds. Huge. They have webbed rear feet and the flat scaly tail. Uh, they live in freshwater environments and free, feed on tree bark, aquatic plants, grasses, sedges, and they build dams and lodges. Lodges are what they live in and store food in. Dams, not all beavers build dams, like there, is, there are beavers in the larger rivers that just do lodges. Dams are in the smaller uh, ponds, streams, and areas where they're actually creating habitat. They will dam streams and create wetlands, which is really important for many, 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 many other species. Their incisors constantly grow. They have four of them. And uh, they call them keystone species because they create habitat and are incredibly important. Uh, the scent mounds they mark with their famous castor uh, gland, castorium is, is secreted, very, very aromatic. And um, they are monogamous. And then we've seen them in family groups. They do, they do stay together in, in small family groups. They are expanding with global climate change, global warming. We're seeing them farther and farther north in Alaska, for example, creating wetlands where there's never been wetlands and that's causing the um, uh, permafrost to melt. And so other species like moose are following them. So they're really changing the, the habitat of the, where they are. So let's turn the page, we've got beavers here. Oops. Okay. There we go. And well, this guy, he's kind of like a big bull, isn't he? <laughs> I didn't realize that until I was just thinking, wait a minute, except small head, big body, but the shapes are so similar. Look at that. So if we, if we look at, at the beaver here, we're going to be um, creating I mean, I'm just going to start with a a big uh, ovaly thing. Ah, it could actually even almost be a circley thing, because then there's this part is almost. I want to mark with almost a, a rectangle. Excuse me, a triangle, and then a, a shape within that for the head, which is really flat popped. So let's, if you can see that, sorry, get this a little closer. We're looking at big circle. And then this kind of oval thing here. And we can start now connecting and then this tail comes out Now the tail is in this instance let's make sure we do it long enough it's extending out a little beyond as uh his head there, but we've got, let's see, you've got fur coming down. Because we can see his kind of haunches here, right? Marking that, you know, so you've got this shape. And notice the, the way the fur is. So beaver shape head here. See how I'm adding in the arm. And then we've got just as a little marker here, 
do shapes, do shapes first, then you can refine them. I'm, I think I'm happy with the, the head shape. There, the nose, let's mark that nose. And then that ear is really important. It's really far back, like so. And then that eye is pretty high up on, make sure you get the placement right. It's not really big. There. So we've got his mouth is open. Can't quite see his teeth, but you can see his front paws coming up and his little, literally. digits here are really showing both and he's holding probably a piece of bark I'm going to create it down below even though it doesn't really exist because that'll really help with perspective and then furry 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 so the the fur goes, follows the contours of the body. It's a very blonde beaver. They are color variable and their head shape is variable. Very, very have unique characteristics. Okay. It's not showing the rear feet at all. They're, they're really tucked in there. Um, let's ink this in. Got quite the little Roman nose going. Okay, let's see. No, want to get, you know, don't get too bogged down in tons of details. You can spend a ton of time on details, but what we're trying to do is quickly capture these critters. It was just really long, silky fur. Beaver fur is one of the best insulators around. It's absolutely amazing for keeping warm.
you want to make sure you indicate the interesting, you know, edge on his tail. And then you can just really lightly, you don't want to spend too much with it, but it's, it is textured. And let's get his little hands or forepaws. I think he's looking good. So we can do some color and then come back and enhance with some pen work to get that, that fur, which is pretty spectacular. And you want to pay attention to sort of some of the contours of the fur. And so this is the... Um, with our beaver. Castor. Canadensis. And let's get that, oof, that golden, beautiful golden coat which I'm going to make with, yes, a, a pure yellow, but then I'm going to knock it back with some burnt sienna. But that gold, I'm actually going to do um, kind of a wash first. Um, and then I'll be covering it with more of the browns, but I, I want to leave some of those amazing gold highlights and I'll also get some siennas in there. But with that, the strong gold undertone, I'll be able to let that peek through I mean, I don't want a yellow beaver, right? But this guy is beautiful coloration. See how I can work this in. Uh, some of the beavers I've seen are, are just chocolate brown. So we can have fun with that. And I'll keep working on it. Um, just trying to approximate that incredible color. So I'll come back and work on him a little bit later. Okay, I better move on. 
It's always fun to spend lots of time on these guys, but we've got several more to do. But you can see how we're going to tease out some of that blondiness and get that going. Yay, that's fun. I love beavers. They are so much fun to watch. We actually watched a beaver. Um, well, we didn't watch it doing it, but we found a tree that was 32 inches in diameter that this beaver family was working on felling for the winter. <laughs> you gotta love it. All right, where are we going next? We are heading farther north. And you can probably guess, yay, our amazing polar bears. They are incredible, huge, up to like 600 to 1700 pounds. Uh, here's a great new word was new for me. They're both terrestrial and pagophilic, meaning ice living. They're considered marine mammals. Uh, so the fur is white or yellowish and they have black skin and that helps with solar uh, gain, but keeping them warm and a very thick layer of fat. Their favorite prey are seals, especially the ringed seal. And the females give birth to their cubs in maternity dens in the winter. And then they stay with mom for up to two and a half years. And they're very vulnerable, as you know, uh, only 22 to 31,000 globally, we think. And that is because of climate change, habitat loss, pollution, energy development worldwide um, in the Arctic. So very, very much at risk, the sky. So I think let's, let's sketch these and you can pick which, whichever one you would like. I think I'm going to sketch the the one on the bottom right. And I think I'm going to, oh, I forgot to, I forgot to write, write my beaver facts. So I'll, I'll run my beaver facts around Mr. Beaver here. And I'll put my, my Mr. Polar Bear here. And not forgetting to go back and add sizes. Make a note to yourselves. We want to do that. So, you know, choose whichever one you like. I think I, I think I like. I don't know. I don't think I. I, I think I'll do the sitting guy. Uh, again, shapes. Let's look at shapes. I'm, I'm getting kind of a. Well, let me start with kind of a big egg shape first of all. And that that helps me. Well, oh, let me make that dark. I, again, I, I know it wouldn't normally do it so dark. I would do it a little, little stronger, but okay, let's do an egg shape. And then within that egg shape, I've got, I've got a, uh, a triangle that's the head going on here, the head, oh, the really big heads, right? They've got super huge amount of muscles back there. Okay, so you've got your multiple shapes here. We'll be teasing that out, so don't don't worry too much. And then we've got I've got a rectangle here. See that? Okay. And then another kind of a circle-y thing here. That's the haunches. So let's tease that out. Here's, here's the rump. Here's the haunch, rear leg. Got your little foot in there. Really huge front, massive front legs with huge paws. You can see there. A 
and that leg's coming up and you can see what's kind of the shoulder and then bring this one down and you've got the other foot there. Let's, get, let's give him something to sit on here. And now let's tease out how did we do with, with this pad here it comes up. We've got kind of a chin, nose. And it just seems like way proportionally. Let's check the proportions. I'm actually measuring here about the same. So this measurement here should be about the same as that. And it is, holy cow, yep, we got that right. So let's got the chin and this huge sloping forehead. And then that comes around there. We don't have as much connectivity here, so that'll go away. And then our ear is, right there. And then the, this is the important placement, this eye coming down. Long nose. And then we've got the big, big mouth, chin coming down. And because of how he's sitting, he's kind of got like the double chin thing going on here. But once we ink this in, I think we'll be a little happier with that. And then he's got more of a, a crest here. I think the ink will help. I did a lot of messing around. So let's give this using broken lines. He's, he's sitting on a, in the ice more or less. So it's kind of broken around. Don't forget, it's very furry. Notice that's kind of a theme with all of our critters up here, very furry to, to survive. And really, boy, those those big black claws really show, don't they? Because they're big. This is a big apex predator. They do have really massive heads.
How many toes do they have? Uh, like all bears, they're going to show, they have five and they're going to show like in a track, I think they'll show four and the fifth one is up a bit. Um, it's a little more vestigial. Um, we can take a look if we have time at, at some bear tracks, that would be fun. I've actually never seen polar bear tracks. <laughs> I have been in polar bear country. But didn't uh, we didn't see polar bears or their tracks? I think I don't quite have the nose right. Not quite, just a little bit more Romany. And there's that bare lip thing going. You know how they have that. Kind of the under underbite kind of thing. <laughs> Trying to approximate some of that fur. He's got quite the the bump back there see this ridge trying to capture that ridge there so it didn't quite do it because they, they have quite a, a raised ridge uh, on their head where all the muscles are attached um, for those huge jaws and the amount of work they have to do to eat their their considerable sized prey. So he's beautiful. So got some extra swoopies in there. I think it's trying to tease out a slightly more slender in here. You can see the 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 jaw line there. But because of the way he's looking, yeah, it's okay. Oh, this is our polar bear. And maybe I'll, you know, sketch the other one um, as well and do a little bit more practice because um, practice makes perfect. Didn't quite get, I didn't quite get the head the way he's got just a slightly different shape head. So I will work on teasing that out. And that's how we, that's how we improve. So Ursus Maritimus. So they're native to the Arctic. Big guys, the males. So we'll put males. 660 to 1760 pounds. It's a small car. Age of Philip. I like that. And so we'll want to go in and when we get a chance. Give some color. And they really do have that yellowish cast. So if you have a really, really pale yellow, you can throw in there. 
not the whole thing, but just a few highlights. They're not, these guys aren't blindingly white. Hard to get that yellow right without making it look not attractive, isn't it? And then we've got ice going on, which you can highlight with just a little bit of, of pure cyan. And we'll work on going in and I would add shadows on him with a very dark blue, not, not a black. I went ahead and did charcoal for his face. I'm just barely adding some very dark blue. which I think will do better than a gray blue. Just be careful not to mix it with the yellow or you'll get a dark green polar bear. I think I'll wait. I mean, I think I'll stop on him. Okay, one last species, and I managed to catch up okay. Uh, trying to do 15 minutes per species, but we did talk a bit at the beginning. All right, who are we going to see next? We are going all the way to the top. And you can probably guess, oops. We are going to see the narwhal which is an amazing toothed whale, the Monodon monoceros. Uh, narwhal or narwhale, some people write it. They're not big, only about 13, 18 feet long. The females are the smaller and they live year round in Arctic waters of Arctic Greenland, Canada, and Russia. So the males, and this is interesting, 15% of females have a helical tusk. So a round straight tusk that is spiral. It comes out of the left side of their jaw. A very, very few, they have found some that had two. They are canine teeth. They are canine teeth. So it is a modified tooth. And they think that it's used, well, there's, there's several things they think that it might be. The, the, the tooth is highly enervated, innervated, um, that should have been enervated, but anyway, it's a sensory organ with millions of nerve endings. So they think it could be a way of reading the seawater and communicating with each other. They've seen them rubbing their, their tooth together. Uh, they've also been observed using their tusk to smack uh, Arctic cod, <laughs> kind of stun them, <laughs> whack, and then they have catch them for feeding. So pretty interesting. What a beautiful animal. So let's, I'm gonna sketch from that painting because it was obviously super hard to find a, uh, a drawing or a, a photo of a complete narwhal. Um, and we get this beautiful painting. So I'm going to, I think I'm gonna sketch it across my, my two pages here. Let's see what we can do. 
Rosanna, what is the ratio of the tusk to the body? Well, it's mm -hmm. variable um, on, oops, let me get rid of that. It's variable, but it's, if we, if we use um, the, just looking at proportions, it is about three quarters the length of the body. Yeah, is what we're going to draw. Um, but it is, the tooth can be quite short. They can be very, very long, but let's, we'll go with this one. So it is variable per species. So let's take a look how we're going to do this. So first we want to make sure we get the uh, proportions right. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a dot here. That's where the, um, the end of my tusk is going to be. Actually, I, mean, I think I'll change that. I think I'll make it right there. I changed my mind. And then we're gonna, the tail, we need to be up here. So if the tusk is three quarters of the length of the whale, then I'm going to, estimate here so there here oops I broke my lead here so the the tails but I think that's about right you see how I did that okay so there there nope I can make it a little bit longer and then this will be my where the where the tail is so going with shapes We've got a, let's just go ahead and do a weird kind of round cornered square rectangle thing here. And then let's go ahead and do kind of a, a, a almost a football thing. Uh, I'll make that stronger. You see how I'm, I'm just trying to get some shapes in here. And then we've got a, a triangle. Shapes here. All right, let's, let's now tease out a whale out of this. Um, and is that about three quarters of this one? Yeah, so it's, it's a little short, but that's okay. Um, let's tease out the, the head shape. Okay, we come up here. You've got a, a chin, kind of, if you want to call it that. And then a sloping, slightly sloping, but pretty square frontal. And then let's come back, get the back up there. And then we're, we're gonna have the, the tail coming up that way with those shapes. So connect that. Got the belly. I think I made this a bit too we'll come up like that. You see how you can change the shape here. Now it's mouth comes in like this, you've got rings, and then we have, use a straight edge if you want. And then don't forget to show your spiral shape. Like so, and where we got to get the placement of of this fin, which is going to be just my 
my uh, page break here. And now the eye, okay, we've got mouth. Eye is just beyond. I think that's a little low. I think when I ink it, I'm gonna go a little higher. Looks big now, but I'm gonna ink it a little higher. So you see how you want to tease that out. Get that forehead going. And then there's not a lot of other details. They're just mottled. Um, let me get this eye placed here. a little better. See how we're just, you know, following the lines, feeling out whale's shape. The Inuit would make beautiful spears out of narwhal tusk. Showing that beautiful. All right. And I think we've come, oh, you want a narwhal here, narwhal. I prefer narwhal. And it's monodon, monoceros. Monodon single tooth. And this is our, it's a toothed whale, toothed whale family. It feeds on uh, flatfish. It's called demersal prey, demersal. Um, prey mostly on the bottom of, of the ocean floor. Single and sometimes double, but single helical tusk. Mostly males, but females, 15% of females. And they feed on, let's get that great term. Demersal prey. Known gen generically as flatfish. Nice. So like cod, halibut, halibut are considered a flatfish. So that we have reached our 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight species. And we did pretty well considering this was a, a big, um, big thing to bite off and true, right? Is sketching animals quickly and trying to capture their shapes and essence. And we're also getting some natural history information. So we can finish our pages and then uh, I hope we can share them. So let me stop share and switch to gallery. Anyone want to hold up their, um, hold up their pages? Um, raise your hand. Uh, well, actually just wave literally and I'll try to spotlight you. Who wants to? Okay, I've got Susan. Uh, let me do Susan um, there. Click your raise hand function. Uh, that will help me find you. Okay, so here's Suzanne, or I think it's Suzanne Grunig. There you go. You're good. I've got you spotlighted, so you don't need to worry about it. Yay. Oh, nicely done. Nice and quick. Well done. Love that capture. Isn't that fun? Oh, nice idea to put the um, put the blue behind it um, and do the rock. I like how you simplified it. I think I got a little too fancy. Tundra Swan, perfect shapes. How fun is that? And I love to see your German. Oh, you got the, the neck. Um, you got the twist really well on our, our fox. Well done. Oh, a twist. <laughs> And our little meadow bowl, perfect beaver. Oh, this is so fun. I love this. Oh, fun. Ooh, nice polar bear. Good job with that color. Um, see how she used the blue under it, kind of a dirty blue with some shadow. That was great. So then you're instantly like, boom, that's ice. Love it. Great. Narval. Oh, good. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Susan. That's just wonderful. Okay. All right. I'll do Kathy Altman. You're next from, you're in Sonora. How fun is that? Oops. Uh, you accidentally turned off your, we need to turn your video back on. Let's see. Uh-oh. Kathy, we lost your video. Oh, go ahead. Oh, shoot. Um, put, I'll keep, oh, wait, there you go. Let me try it again. There we go. Nicely done. Look at that. Oh, I like how you did it big. Was nicely done. And is that toned paper? Yes. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, now that I think about it, toned paper would be great for these um, species. Well done. Love the fox. <laughs> Bowl. Nice. Fun, fun. Beaver. Well done. These are so fun and your polar bear. Oh, God, I like your blue shadows behind. Really nicely done. Thank you. And enjoy your time in Mexico. Thank you. <laughs> I'm jealous. I love Mexico. Okay, let's see. Sonia. Let's see. There we go. I've got Sonia. I did not do a lot of the coloring in yet. But it's yeah. hard. I didn't get to a lot of it either. Uh, here, I'll unmute myself. Yeah, you're there's good. Yeah, there you go. Just hold your, there's your box. Nice color. Yeah, well done on that. And you got the vole in. I forgot to leave room for the vole. <laughs> <laughs> and let me find the rest of these guys. Uh, here's my beaver. Good. Oh, good. Shapes and colors. You got that golden, you know, that that's really an unusually golden beaver. So that's wonderful. You want to put that in the notes that yeah. is a very golden um, furred beaver because that's pretty unusual. And again, here is not colored in my oh, bear. Job. Yeah, you've got a really, really nice on him. And a more well. Oh, nice. Narwhals are so amazing, aren't they? Yeah, they're really cool. And last, last one. Looks more like a goose. <laughs> oh, well, I think you can tell it's a, a swan. I think the, the proportions on the swan, I think they have longer necks than geese. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I realized it, that after I started. Yeah, I was I was struggling with um, when I drew it live, I got it all wrong. And that's why I was like, okay, no, the next longer. Well done. Thank you. Let's sure. remove spotlight. Um, lower hand. Oops. There we go. Uh, Lisa Portwood, you're next. All right. So I guess, I don't know how well you can see it. That's great. There we go. Yeah, I see that long, long neck. Looks mm -hmm. more swanny, doesn't it? And yeah. nice proportions on everybody. Yay. Love it. Nice. The little bowl. Good. Love it. Oh, good job on everything. And you got some notes in. We're really <laughs> cramming. We're cramming stuff in here. This is fun. But the, I think the more we do this, the faster we'll all get. At, yeah. At capturing and my problem was I think I, I just love to go into the details yeah and, uh, yeah I think Suzanne your examples at the beginning were great on how not to get into the details you did a great job too there Lisa well done thank you thank and you Christina give me spotlight you fun yay okay hold up yours Okay. Um, oh, nice colors. Look at that. I got this funny thing on my screen now. It's going. Nice. So those were the first two. Hey, oh, look at that. I like that. Did you do direct watercolor or did you do sketching too? I did directly um, use my fine liner for okay. the ink. I didn't do anything with a, with a pencil. Nice. And I realized I'm quite fast when I do that. So I had time yes. to start the watercolor before you had even started it. Great. That's really good. Um, perfect. Yeah. I just, I like to hear people's process so we can, you know, some people want to see ske uh, like pencil first. And I think that helps people learning. Oh, I like the colors. Notice how she did the wonderful shadows on her polar bear and the narwhal. So really nicely done like that. I started by just doing a light cream on, on the bear. And then I had time for the shadows because you just started coloring it. Yeah, good job. Nicely done. Well done. I think as we all get faster at this, you know, we can start going direct with pen when we get brave. But sometimes when you tease out, when it tees out shapes, you don't want to do it. Um, I don't with pen because then I end up with a real mess if I if I get my proportions wrong. <laughs> Um, Linda Madsen, you want to um, hold up yours? Yay, look at that. Wonderful. How great is that? Look at the great dramatic um, background on your polar bears. Really well done. Hey, and um, I like your, your beaver texture. Really, really great. Well, well done. There. This was great for practicing quick sketching. I mean, I started yeah. really slow and, you know, kind of. Yeah, you can tell. Um, I like how you can slow do on the, the 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 first one is always like more for me. It's a little more timid, and then as I get going, it's like you warm up and you start losing. The reason I go fast and do eight is because it gets you to stop worrying and fussing too much. Well, yeah. so thank you for hosting this. This is fun. I'm loving it. I'm learning a lot too. Perfect. Thank you. And Tiffany, yay. Okay. All right, what do we got? So, oh, started nice. off slow. Yeah, doesn't it feel like a little like you want to go back and redo the muskox? I do because I'm like, oh, no worries, like, your auckland is great. And then, ah, look at that! You got the goose, oh, the tundra swan, and your colors and the motion on your box are fantastic. I like, I like how you didn't get lost in details like I did. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't use pen at all. So I just went from pencil sketches straight into watercolor. Right, watercolor. So no pen at all. I might have to do that. I love pen, but uh, I think you, I think I see more success with the direct watercolor there. Nice. Oh, look and then that. I didn't get the beaver done. I had to step away for a few seconds, but I'll catch up. <laughs> nice. Well done. And 
than our polar bear and our. Oh, I, I really love the polar bears. Everybody's just did a fabulous job. It's going to be fun for everybody as we progress. Thank you, Tiffany. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, how we all change our um, styles, right? And 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 get more confident. So um, wonderful. Let me um, say thank you to everyone. I haven't scheduled the next one yet. Wasn't sure how we feel about um, December and like holiday craziness. We could do on early January, I think. I think the next month is going to be a bit bonko. What do you think? Yeah. Do we? Early January kind of sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's do once a month um, on that. Uh, let me thank everyone to for coming. And if you, I'll be sending out the recording, as you guys know, and pictures. I'll make the website page um, probably later today. And I put, I'll, I'll send this out too. I'm doing these because I love it. It's great fun. If you want to throw something in the tip jar, I put that down there. This was fun. And I noticed a lot more people are starting to share their stuff. And in, in the early days, I would say, do you want to share? And they'd be like Cric crickets. Everyone would be like, mm, no. <laughs> so thank you for sharing everybody. This was going to be really fun. And um, we got a lot of animals to do. So have a wonderful day. And if I don't see you all, um, have a wonderful holiday season. It's going to be great. Oh, and I'm on Tuesday, I'll be sending out the links for um, the products I'm going to have in the really special ones are coming in that the, I got the FedEx notice. They'll be here on Monday. So look for some really fun, very, just a few. I'd only have a handful, but if you want to give yourself a treat, I'll send that out by email. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.